Good afternoon and welcome to the Church of the Holy Trinity in Juneau, Alaska, as we pause in the middle of the day to pray for the world. I invite you to join us in worship. You can go to our website, trinityjuno.org, and click on the Noonday Prayers link and scroll down to Thursday. Oh God, make speed to save us. Oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The psalm today is Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me, O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed and all together dismayed. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, Aha, and gloat over me turn back because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me speedily, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue today with our reading from Galatians, and I'm feeling the need to put this reading in a little historical perspective. <laughs> I was a little sort of taken back when I first read it this week. Galatians is the ninth book of the New Testament, and it's a very early, very early letter of Paul, according to the scholars. And in it, he's dealing with a bit of dissent and controversy between the converts, specifically between those who are Jewish Christians and those new Gentile Christians who were coming into the fold. And there was a segment of the Jewish Christians who felt that in order to truly be Christians, the Gentile Christians had to obey the law of Moses and go through all the rites, including circumcision. And Galatians is Paul's answer to them in which he says, uh-uh. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Listen, I, Paul, am telling you that if you let yourself be circumcised, Christ will be of no benefit to you. Once again, I testify to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obliged to obey the entire law. You who want to be justified by the law have cut yourselves off from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, by faith, we eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision or uncircumcision counts for anything. The only thing that counts is faith working through love. You are running well. Who persuaded you from obeying the truth? Such persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough. I am confident about you in the Lord that you will not think otherwise. But whoever it is that is confusing you will pay the penalty. But my friends, why am I still being persecuted if I am still preaching circumcision? 
In that case, the offense of the cross has been removed. I wish those who unsettle you would castrate themselves. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and mercy, give your blessings to the Diocese of Alaska. Watch over our churches, sustain our people, strengthen our leaders. Through the Holy Spirit, guide and guard the diocese, keeping it always under your care and protection. Let us be a loving family, serving you in faithful devotion to the gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ. Give your blessings to Mark, our bishop. Give him a spirit of courage and right judgment, a spirit of knowledge and love. Let your Holy Spirit be his companion. Let your gospel be always in his thoughts. May your presence in his life be a light for all to see in every good work for the building up of your people and to the glory of your holy name. Give us the blessing of your example. Help us to follow the way of Jesus today and every day. Give us compassion at the center of all we do, compassion for ourselves as disciples still young in faith, compassion for others as members of our own family and God. Let us become examples for others, as so many others have been examples to us, through your love and for the sake of your glory. Watch over all elders and the brothers and sisters of the Society of St. Simeon and St. Anna. If there are any in a time of sorrow, sickness, or need, give them the touch of your healing hand. If any are in times of joy, thanksgiving, or fulfillment, give them the song of angels to praise your name. Let us be your servants in this life, just as we will be your sons and daughters in the life to come. I invite you to lift up your prayers with ours. For an end to this pandemic, for an end to the grief and the pain and the concern and the loneliness that it's caused. Amen. Our commemoration of special people today includes one whose name I'm going to butcher, but we'll try it anyway. <laughs> and it's Manche Masamola, and she was born around 1930 in South Africa in an area in which the small Christian community went near where she grew up was considered with suspicion, to say the least. However, Manche heard the preaching and decided she wanted to be a Christian and she wanted to be baptized. Her parents tried to beat that desire out of her, and when it didn't happen, they took her off to an isolated area and killed her and buried her in, a, in that isolated place. Later on, that place became a place of pilgrimage, and eventually, her mother was baptized into the church 40 years after her death. Um, she has, she's 
honored at Westminster Cathedral with one of the statues outside of the 20th century martyrs. She's one of them. Almighty and everlasting God, who kindled the flame of your love in the heart of your faithful martyr, Manche Masamola, grant to us, your servants, a like faith and power of love, that we who rejoice in her triumph may profit by her example. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May God the Father bless us. May Christ take care of us. May the Holy Spirit enlighten us all the days of our life. The Lord be our defender and keeper of body and soul, both now and forever to the ages of ages. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And may God kindle in us the fire of love. Amen. Amen.